Uh, good afternoon, everyone. We are honored to have here with us Professor Richard from UN at Franklin Pearson School of Law at Bits Law School. Professor Richard specializes in criminal procedure and fundamentals of law and practice. In addition to his academic role, he serves as a partner at Sam Perel and Welsh PLLC in Elixir, New Hampshire, which is a prominent law firm. To begin with, thank you first of all, Professor, for being here. Sure. To begin with, I'd like to ask you about legal writing, which is a fundamental skill for all the law students. How does legal writing differ from other, law, other forms of writing, and why is it considered such a critical skill for a law student? So legal writing for lawyers is what we do. It is essential to our job. It is uh, the way in which we advocate for clients. And at the end of the day, that's what we do. We communicate the needs of our clients and have to do that in a way that is both um, professional but also persuasive. And legal writing is the instrument by which we do that for our clients. Uh, yes, I, I completely agree with you, sir. Legal writing is indeed very crucial and it uh, has its demands. What are some common challenges that law students face while learning legal writing, especially when applying the IRAG method? So I think uh, one of the challenging things for law students, and maybe for lawyers too, is taking the time that's necessary to write an effective, persuasive piece of writing. Mm -hmm. And that means not starting it the day before it's due. It means giving it the appropriate amount of time. It means being willing to revise their writing. And by revision, I don't mean editing. I don't mean making sure that the punctuation is correct or the citation is even correct. I mean really taking the original writing, looking at it anew, revision and being willing to reconstruct it and spend time with it, and do that in multiple drafts. Um, very well said, sir. Why are clarity and precision so important while le like writing legally? What are the basic things that we need to keep in mind? Um, well, our profession is a profession of communication. Mm -hmm. um, we, as advocates, I as a lawyer, I can't design a bridge. I'm not an architect. I can't make uh, sick people healthy. Mm -hmm. I'm not a doctor. I can't install the electrical wiring in your home. Uh, but through communication, I can build bridges. Through communication, I can um, help someone who has been injured to feel some sense of uh, relief or some remedy for their injury. Through communication, I can shine light on dark places and bring justice to, to the world. And so communication is just so critical to our function as advocates that legal writing is the manner, the method by which we do that. And that's why it's so important. That's very insightful, sir. Uh, moving from theory to practice, how important is effective legal writing actually in legal practice? I think it's extremely important. Um, you know, we're asking judges, other lawyers, um, a lot of other people to do something. And legal writing, uh, the same formula that and format that I offer first-year law students, um, I would say applies to the most experienced lawyer. You need to let your audience, your listener, the person receiving your writing, know what the issue is at the beginning and what you're asking for. You need to explain to them what the rule of law is, and you need to apply that rule of law uh, to provide a reasoning, a lo logic, a basis for your request. And then you need to present them with a sound conclusion that presents the legal remedy you're asking for. And so that same formula, the IRAC formula that we teach first-year writing students, applies throughout a person's legal career and is just a, a great uh, outline for how to think about oral argument, writing letters, all forms of advocacy. 
Uh, finally, as we conclude, what is the final piece of ev uh, advice that you would like all the students to have from your side? Um, I think students often think they know what they're doing, and they think they know what they're writing. And I've been doing this for 30 years, mm -hmm. and I would say when I think I know what I'm doing, when I think I know what I'm writing, that's when I know I need to ask someone else to look at my writing. I'm always asking colleagues to review what I write before I submit it to a court. Um, and we need to, as law students and as professionals, um, be willing to be open to criticism, accept the criticism, actually make changes as a result of the criticism, and part of maturing and being a professional is being able to offer that criticism uh, in constructive criticism, help to other people that we work with. So, I mean, that's part of, you know, maturing as a person. It's part of maturing as a professional. And I think it's um, what makes a good lawyer at the end of the day. Thank you so much, Professor, for sharing your expertise with us today. Uh, your insight into legal writing and its significance in both academic and professional settings have been invaluable, like from my point of view as well. We appreciate your time and look forward to applying these lessons that we've learned here today. Well, thank, thank you, you so much, very sir. much for having me. Thanks.